If the person starts from rest and lands in the water at the point depicted, what is the height h of the water slide? So just so we know what's going on, we are looking for the height h, which is going to be, what happened there? There we go. We're looking for the point h right there, right? So let's think about this in terms of, uh, this is a work energy problem, all right? So in general, what I'm going to say is that work external is equal to the change in total mechanical energy. Okay, work external equals delta Te. In a situation like this, where we have person sliding down, right, and then finally going somewhere, understand that they are sliding down under the influence of gravity and gravity alone. Okay, so the kinetic energy and their potential energy all has to do with gravity, which is a conservative force, which means there are no external forces and thus no external work going on here. So zero equals Te2 minus Te1 for all cases. Te1 equals Te2, total energy two, okay? And energy one is gonna be made up of potential energy, one, and kinetic energy, one. Likewise for total energy two. So let's think about solving this problem, right? We are interested in figuring out the height here, right? Which means we might want to think about the energy or the potential energy at part A, right? Because potential energy is going to be mgh. Also, I'll write down that kinetic energy is going to be one half mv squared. So knowing something about the potential energy at this point is going to be helpful for us, right? Because then we could just, you know, we know, uh, well, we don't know the masses, but we might get closer if we can figure out an expression for potential energy at point A. That way we could at least associate it with the height. So let's see what happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about what happens here and here, okay? I'm going to think about what happens, as, what happens to the total energy as we go from this point to this point. The fact of the matter is I could go from this point all the way to this point, but what you're going to see is that there's some information for, missing for that. So it's going to be a lot simpler for me to go from A to this new point, which I'm going to call C. Let me adapt my general formula here, here, here for us, right? So I'm going to go potential energy at point A plus kinetic energy at point A. It's going to be equal to potential energy C plus kinetic energy C, all right? Let me uh, fill these guys in. We've got mgh of a plus my one-half mv of a squared is going to be equal to my mgh at point b plus my one-half uh, mvb squared, right? And what we can do is we can say, well, we started from rest. Started from rest. So the velocity up here, v, is going to be equal to zero, which is going to make that whole term equal to zero. All right? And uh, if you want, what we can do is we can say, we can fill in some information. Uh, g is always going to be no. It's always going to be 9.8. So the height at a, let's call it 1.5 plus my unknown height, right? That is, if the, because this is going to have to be the reference level, right? So that's going to be height is equal to zero. So I'm going to call this height here at point A, 1.5 plus the H that I'm interested in. That overall is going to be equal to M, G, height, height at, uh, look what I did here. I meant for these to be C's. Sorry about that. So in line with those. Anyway, let's look at the height at point C here, which as you can see is just going to be 1.5. So 1.5 goes there. And here's where the problem is. 1 half mvc squared. And I have no idea what vc is, what the velocity here is. Okay. If I did, then let's see. Masses would cancel out, and I'd have this expression g. 1.5 plus h is equal to g 1.5 plus a half 
vc squared, right? I would know g, I would know g, I'd be able to rearrange for h, but I don't know what this is. So we're going to hold off for a second and we're going to get it. And we're going to figure that this must have been why they gave us this piece of information here. Let's think about going from c to b and let's think of it from a kinematics point of view, right? One thing that's true is that delta x equals v zero t plus one half a t squared. Um, another thing that's true is that delta y right equals v zero t minus one half g t squared. Right. I'm doing the generalization here for the y axis because the acceleration there is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second, right? So that's what, that, that's what happens there. And also in the x-axis, in this case, there is no acceleration. So if you think about it, we have a v0, which we'd like to know, because that would be the vc, the, 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 the speed at point c here, right? And we have a delta x, right? So we'd like to go ahead and say, okay, v0 equals delta x over t from this right here. Don't know what t is though, right? So we're going to get it from the y-axis, which has stuff that we do know. Delta y. We're going to fall 1.5 meters from that point, okay? So negative 1.5 is going to be equal to our v0. Well, in the y-axis, that thing is 0, right? Don't forget, all of these values are specific to um, the axis in question, right? So it's going to be zero minus one half g t squared. And if you solve this up for t, okay, I'll do it for you. 1.5 equals negative 4.9 t squared. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4.9. And let's see, we're going to get calculator here, we're going to get 0 0.306 is equal to t squared, so that t, if you take the square root of both sides, square root of that, oops, square root of 0 0.306, it actually comes out to 0 0.553 seconds. Great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and put it right in there. My initial velocity for that trip, right, it's going to be delta x 2.5 over 0 0.553. That initial velocity will be 4.52 meters per second. Great, right? That guy, you betcha, is going right in there. And we're going to be good to go here, okay? So I have this expression, let's see. I'm going to start replacing g. We have 9.8, 1.5 plus h is equal to 9.8 times 1.5 plus a half. 4.52 squared. Okay, I'm just going to shut up for a second while I go ahead and solve this for you. Okay, so there it is. Height is going to be equal to approximately 1.04 meters. Let me see. Significant figures check says that, yeah, we'll probably keep all of those. So 1.04 meters, and we're going to be good to go.